Okay, welcome to a new video. So I've received a massive response and I'm starting to see all the awesome work starting to come in from all of you posting the training that you've done so far. And so far we've completed two of the 10 videos. So we've literally just scratched the surface of what we're gonna cover. In the upcoming lessons, we're gonna learn how to create fire and explosions as well as pyroclastic dust as we have our building simulation collapse. And we'll also learn how to export everything and set it all up even as collisions for our fluid simulations as well as learn to create extra detail to our rock surfaces and really push everything even further. Everything we're covering is based on what we do in production because it's absolutely critical to learn and set up our dynamics in an intelligent manner that allows for complete control over everything that we're creating. I've seen a lot of training that shows the basics of how to get 70% of the way there but it falls short on giving you total control over what you're doing. As you might have noticed, if you wanted to do a different area of the building and get that destroyed, it would just be a matter of moving the ship to crash into that area instead, as well as moving those boundary boxes that we've set up to a different location on that structure. That's all you would need to do to have an entirely unique simulation of that area of the building entirely collapsing. Everything adapts because it's set up the right way. And this is how I want you to think moving forward. This lesson is a great example of this. We take what we've built so far, and we step things up even further. We're gonna finalize all the dynamics of our building collapse. We're even gonna choreograph the destruction of the upper levels and even have them collapse down onto the foundation and have the rest of the building collapse around that. In other words, we begin to animate exactly what we want to have happen and hit the exact timing and get the exact results that we're going for. This lesson covers a lot and it's something that I encourage you to go through again and again as these are the foundations of any good destruction setup. Over the coming lessons we're going to cover a lot and the pace is going to quicken and by the end of this training series you'll have created all the necessary elements to make a really good visual effect shot and replicate a lot of what we do in Hollywood film. But let's dive in. Okay, so in this lesson we're going to continue on with the dynamics that we've been building up. So we've been doing all the destruction so far, having this building collapse and do its thing. Now, what I want to do in this lesson is start to really preempt the destruction. We have the ship crashing, but that's not really what's going to take the building down. What's going to take the building down is the building exploding. So part of this is that we want to build the dynamics for the explosion, and then we'll be building the explosion around that. Like I said in lesson two, it's kind of the chicken before the egg. It's kind of hard to decide, do you do the destruction first or do you do the explosion? Doing the explosion first is cool because you can get that right, but typically you want to source things from the actual dynamics, um, sometimes even drive a lot of the motion, collisions, things like that. So this is something that we need to keep in mind is how we want to go about it. That was really cool how it's dangling there. <laughs> uh, so what we'll do is we're going to start to build out the building dynamics and we're also going to continue on that journey. Um, so not only will we blow out the center, but we're then going to choreograph a lot of the other parts of the building to collapse as well. So to begin, uh, as we've seen here, we have the ship crash and it's causing everything to fall apart, which looks really cool. What I'd like to do is actually have a physical explosion happen. So the ship crashes into the building and then blows up and explodes. So to do that, we're going to need to go back into Tide Flow and start working on doing all the destruction. So I've got our tie flow system here. It's going to make this a bit more narrow to give me a little bit more room. All right. And for now, I might just turn these guys off. One other thing too, just looking at the destruction, I wouldn't mind um, having three levels up here and the reason is because we're going to make the whole top of the building fall down afterwards so the cool thing is if we want to go and make some adjustments like that i'm just going to turn the walls off for a second turn the environment building on and we have that volume inside and outside so all i'm going to do is the inside here i'm going to shift that down one 
maybe even a little bit more. And that way, hopefully, we get some more dangly bits there, which could be kind of neat. So I've just moved this down a little bit. So there's three levels remaining. And the cool thing is that's all we need to do. If I turn on our system again, now it's going to update to reflect that. So now if I'm playing it through, we get the ship flying in. And the whole thing breaks apart. So we can see that that's working. And maybe even move it back slightly. Okay. Now, let's create the explosion. And the explosion is actually going to be pretty straightforward for the dynamics part. So, in other words, we've got these systems here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new birth operator and the birth operator uh, allows me to create particles where I need I'm just going to create one at I think it's 107 is where it's inside because I'm remembering the keyframes that we animated from video 2 so 107 is where the uh, if we jump ahead a little bit 107 is basically where the ship is kind of dead in the center there and I'm actually going to use the ship's position so do a position object. Now you see how every time that we even just add something in, even though it's to this and not to the other stuff, it's still recalculating every time. So imagine if we're doing all the pre-fracturing and importing and all that stuff every single time, we'll get ridiculously slow. So uh, 107, we can turn the walls off for a second. 107 to 107, and we're just gonna create one particle. That's all we're doing. Uh, and I'm just going to click Add Selected to add the proxy ship in. So what's happening is it's using the center pivot point of the ship to create that one particle in the center. And we're going to use that to create the explosion. So the next step that I want to do is I'm going to assign a shape. And this shape, we can make this a low-res geosphere. And we can also put a scale on here as well. And so the sphere itself, uh, I just want to do something really simple. I'm just going to get a, um, I just basically want to get this to scale up over time. So scale, I'm going to set this to 10,000 because we're working at a relatively high uh, scale. So if we go display, change this to geometry, at least now we can see the sphere there. It's kind of small, but we can see it. And adding this scale operator in, what we're going to do is we're going to set this to uh, scale up over time. So rather than inherit, we can say relative multiply. And what relative multiply does is every time it samples it, it's going to increase in size. Un unlike that ship. I'll explain what that is in a moment. So let's look at... Um, at this so relative multiply right now isn't doing anything but if we were to put like 135 it's actually going to grow exponentially over time so I might make it 136 um, so right now we have without animating anything it's just over time it's now animating out like that okay so finally we just need to tell it to stop and in this case I'm just going to delete it because that's all we need is about um, if we go to event age and set this to seven, it means that this is going to live for seven frames. So scale, 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 die. Okay. So that's how we can make a very quick pop that we can then use to simulate everything. Now, just to go back for a second, what was that ship scaling? So, oops, not ship locator, ship. So that was just pure coincidence. I'm going to turn the particle system off for a second. In case you haven't noticed, when the ship comes in, uh, I had actually animated this to scale down. Um, so this was in the original scene file that you've received, was that the ship flies into the building, and, um, and then once it's inside, it actually just scales down to nothing. And that's partially to do with the fact that we're setting up um, our collision here. 
And at least right now, there's not an easy way to turn this off. You can set up all this stuff, but this is for testing. Um, and you can, you know, uh, actually you can't, I should say, do anything in here for filters. So that becomes a problem because it means that you can get something to collide uh, physically, but you can't turn it off again without moving everything to a new event that doesn't have it anymore. So it's, it's a little bit silly. I'm going to, if I remember, uh, speak to the developer about that. Um, after this, I've got a long list of stuff. I've just been too busy to speak to them about feature requests or him, but um, I just want to explain what that is. It's basically just my way of saying, well, if it's that small, it's not going to collide with anything. It's going to be too small to be considered. So that's what that is. It's just keyframed down and is always in the original scene file. But now what we have is we have our groovy effect here um, that is scaling out and then dying for seven frames. So what would be the next thing to do? The next thing to do would be to add a physics shape in here. And the physics shape uh, will allow us to then make it collidable. So if we turn this on now, we can just rename this to explosion. Turn on the walls. Let's hide that building again. And so what's going to happen now is the ship is going to come in and then it's going to get triggered at a certain frame to explode. And what's interesting about this is that as it emits, it's continuing to follow the motion of the object. So all we need to do, I'll go back to the first frame, just turn this off for a second, is lock this. So we want to do that anyway because we want this to be unyielding, meaning that it's going to um, push everything away, but it's not going to react itself. So now when the sphere comes in, it's not going to move and it's not going to be pushed around. It's just going to push everything else out. So here we can see the sphere is growing and it didn't really hit everything as hard as we want. However, that's because we don't want to get crazy. We don't want to push this stuff too far apart. What we do want to do is have the, in this case, let's just do the floor for now because the floor is connected to everything, right? So as the floor comes in, it's going to push the floor out and the floor is going to push everything else out. So rather than making something that like hits the walls and pushes them out too much, um, I want this to be more pushing out because that way it's going to respect all the joints and it's going to give it more of an organic look. So now we can see the sphere is pushing and everything is ripping apart a lot more violently now. So this is definitely giving it more of an impact. So we can see now that there's more of a push and we can still make that more violent. We can go back into the scale and we can say, okay, well, what if you were 150? Or what we could do is actually play with um, the physics as well. So under the shape, restitution goes a long way uh, as well as the friction. So this is where we can do a lot of stuff. We can, uh, we don't really need to mess with mass but that's something we can mess with. The restitution is kind of the bounciness. So in other words, it's the energy conservation. So in other words, like if we wanted to crank this up, this is going to shotgun all the pieces out everywhere. So as this comes in, This is becoming a lot more explosive. And all I did was I adjusted the uh, the shape up to 150. I did throw in the mass, which I don't believe is going to do anything. But we've also got friction being put up there as well. But the main thing is that that's going to be a lot more explosive, probably too much at this point. But it's just showing what it's doing. Okay, so I think we had it at 136. I'm going to keep it at the original value. Um, 
but we can set the friction, which means it's just gonna um, catch everything a little bit more. And the restitution, I'll keep the same for now. If we wanna speed this up a little bit for now, uh, what we could do is, when's it coming in? I think it's 102, something like that. So we could set this to be, to actually start at frame 100, just for now, so that way, I was hoping, that would be faster, but I guess it's still calculating all the um, the prefrag stuff. So I'll keep this at 80 for now. And it just means we've got less frames to calculate at the very beginning. But the main thing is, as the ship comes in, crashes, and then the sphere pops. And now we can see it's pushing everything out. So we don't want anything that's too crazy, but we do want it to feel like this is exploding. So it's okay, it's not great. Uh, let's see. I'd say let's pump this up a little bit. Let's say 140, and let's just see what a difference that makes. It's not too big a difference. Let's try 144. The other thing we could do is keep it at 136 and just add one more frame where it has one more frame to push out further because it's exponentially growing. But I think um, I just rather make this a little bit bigger overall. Okay, so that's feeling a little bit more explosive. Let's just see how this continues. So it's definitely punching a giant hole in everything. I think that looks good. Like again, from the camera view is always the best way to look at things because it might look perfect from a different angle, but that doesn't really help us. So I'm just gonna run, not a preview, but just play through like calculating this for a minute, just so we can see this in context a little bit more. But I think that this is definitely, I feel like it's almost too explosive, but it's, um, it looks cool, at least, so that's the main thing. So I'll run a preview of this, we can check it out, and, um, and then we can make some calls on what we want to do next. So already this is looking pretty cool. Uh, we can see that we have these bigger chunks, which are actually made up of smaller chunks because we have all the binds and everything working really well. So that's really effective. And we have the explosiveness of it. We've got everything kind of working really well. And there is some dangly bits, not as much as I was hoping uh, at the top, but we can definitely work on that more too. So overall, I think this is looking pretty neat. Um, but you know, this is just the beginning. We're about to, to go do some really cool stuff. Just for fun though, like I mentioned, if we did want some dangly bits up there, Maybe that is just a matter of us going in to our original model and getting our geo here and just getting the top one, two, three, actually getting this. Scaling that down a little bit. And then let's just try doing the same here as well. So I'm just doing this to try it out. Like I might control Z, you know, undo this, but um, just to kind of, I just want to show how flexible this whole system is that we just change the boxes a little bit. And what does that mean? What is that going to do for our simulation? Because that's the whole point is like, if you had several buildings to blow up, as long as they're all constructed the same way, um, you could just copy paste this whole setup and it's going to work right away. So let me hide my building. And I'm just going to jump ahead a few frames. And um, let's just see what we get from that. Because I thought, um, I thought it'd be cool just to see some dangly bits up here. So in other words, just 
it seems so perfectly cut along there, so I thought it'd be cool if we just had some other stuff going on. And already, that's looking pretty cool. And like I mentioned before, there is some things, like, I can see that there is kind of just hanging. Um, I'm going to get into that right after the next bit. I'll make sure that we um, give this some more samples, and I'll explain all of that. So, just for fun, and I hadn't planned to do this, but what if we had the entire building crumble, like so, so it all blows up. But then, what if we then had all of this area here begin to crumble too? And then this area here collapsed and fell down. And then as this big section here, including the roof, which we haven't got turned on right now, um, the whole thing dropped. And when it dropped, it hit this section here, and this section here then smashed apart as well, and continued to drive down into the ground. What would that look like? That would look pretty cool. Um, a lot of times, and this is the problem I see that a lot of people doing training, you learn how to break something. Awesome. But choreographing, getting very specific with what you're doing, that is the real control that you need in production. So if a director says, well, I want the, the roof to fall, you're like, well, you know, how do I do that? Uh, I just turn it on and make it fracture. That's not really going to work. So we need to set that up next and do that in, in an intelligent way. So we have the explosion. It's looking pretty good. Um, we have, you know, all the caving. Let's do the next step in this. So let's just pay attention and make some notes. Okay, so frame 10, oops, frame 105. Uh, ship hit. And then frame 107, I think, is when the explosion happens. So all this is being destroyed. Now, as this begins to clear out of the way, I'm gonna go back to like probably 154. So 154 back caves in. So in other words, I want to have this whole area here, and let's draw on that. I'm going to mark it up here. So let's have this whole area just begin to kind of crack and break apart. And then, as that happens at 154, it's probably 20 frames later, so 174 around there, I'm going to have this whole section cave. And also want to have it progressively happen, not just turn on. So I want it to start at this end and work its way, crack, 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 all the way to the back of it. As if like it has no foundation, so it just begins to fall. So I'd say 174, roof collapse. And then from there, it's a bit of a guessing game because it just depends how long it takes to fall. I mean, obviously, we, we can control that if we absolutely need to hit the right beats that the director asked for. But <clears throat> in general, it's more like, let's see it fall. And then around the time that it does hit the section, we can then have that all get destroyed as well. So that's the general idea of what we're going for here. Take a screenshot so we can look at this later on. So the next step of this is to activate this area here. Um, what we'll do is, uh, I'm gonna go to the right viewport, and let's just go into Create Shapes Line, 
And let's create our own, oops, uh, let's make tie flow dynamics the active layer, create line, and let's do this. Okay, so there's my really badly drawn guinea pig or fish or something. Uh, and I'm going to go to the modify panel and we'll just add an extrude modifier. And we have to give this some ridiculous value. Let's try five, try 3000. Okay. And the whole point is we just want to have something where we can actively just wedge that in there and everything we touch, we're going to tell it to activate. So I'm, I'm assuming that you already know what I'm doing now. It's just like, okay, it's that simple, but it is that simple. Um, so all we're doing is we're going to say this area goes live. So going back in to tie flow, we can go into our locked building. I can do a surface test. And we'll pick this guy and timing wise make sure it's set to continuous so that way it's continuously looking for it and we can just drop this in here so the surface test we also want to say if it's inside of this volume and that means it's going to look inside of that mesh so rather than just um, sending it back into like this group or something um, let's start this from scratch. We're going to build up a new set. So I'm going to do a physics shape and we can link that in here and we'll change this to geometry. If we want, we can also change this to default. Edge faces off. Um, there's a few different ways that we can work and it just really kind of comes down to, you know, I, I like working with clay. But if you wanted to get all the display and everything working, then you know you can set it up however you want. So main thing is as this comes in, we want it to go into this event. Uh, I also want to do a Varanoi on this because I, I want these to break even more. I want these to, to begin to crack apart. So I can put in a Varanoi fracture. And this Varanoi fracture can allow it to break a little bit more. We don't need to go crazy. Let's just add like two points, random on surface. And that way it's just gonna help break them a little bit. Make sure to put that above the shape though. So that way then it's going to read in these dynamics. And I wanna treat these dynamics a little bit differently. Um, what I wanna do is I want to set this up to have a lot of friction but I also want the mass to be a lot heavier. So this is gonna be four times heavier than the other stuff based on its volume. And that means that it's more likely to push everything out of the way. So in other words, as this kicks in, um, it's going to begin to fall once we add gravity and it's going to begin to push everything else out of the way. So I'm gonna hide this object, in fact, Let's just animate this really quick. So what was our frame timing that we had set up? We had set it up where it's 154 caves in. Um, so let's say, go back to our building. I'd say by like 160, I'm gonna set a keyframe there. So, sorry, I just went to frame 160 with this selected, right clicked on it and just hit okay, that sets a keyframe for uh, position, rotation, scale. And then probably a little bit before 154 because it'll take time to get in. So 150, I'm just going to animate this out of the way. And I don't have to worry about any of the big chunks falling into this object because they're in a different group because this is only the static building that's being affected. 
I'll just call this activator shape 01, I guess. And because I don't, you know, we're going to do the roof and everything, but I don't know what to call this, like back wall. So that's going to animate in really straightforward. But as it does that, hide the building. Uh, it can move into here. So I'm going to copy the gravity, paste it in there. And for now, let's just see how that looks. So I'm going to play through this. Make sure we got the walls and the floor at least on. Okay, so this is looking pretty cool. Uh, we can see now the whole area collapses. The only thing is, I feel like it could start a lot sooner, just kind of gradually work its way back, because you can kind of see it just, it feels like it turns on and just collapses. So I think that'd be the next step, is just to have it gradually peeling back from the beginning. Uh, but we can see it's, it works its way all the way back and then crumbles down. Um, the other thing is there are a lot of big chunks that was intentional. So we're going to work on getting these big chunks to break um, even more. So that way they end up being smaller chunks. And we can also do the binding and stuff like that too um, as an optional thing. And then I want to have the ceiling collapse. So there's a bunch of stuff we're going to do. Um, for now, I'll turn the floors off just to make this a little bit faster with our shape, our activator shape. Let's just turn the, I guess we keep the dynamics on for a second. The main thing is I just want to be able to see where this is as everything begins to break. So the explosion has just happened. So I feel like right now this could already be inside of it. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn on the building and I might just animate this jumping. Actually, no. I'm just guessing a little bit, but let's say 125 and then 150. Okay, so I just moved the keys around a little bit, but let's just see where it's at at 140. So I'm going to turn the building off. Tie flow back on. So at 140, it's here. So I might shift the whole thing. I'm just trying to think. Okay, so I would say, I think the best way to do this is this. Uh, we're just going to have a jump in here at 141. Okay, and then it can just slowly, progressively work its way back. So... I'll turn tie flow off, turn the building back on so we have something to look at. I'm going to right click again to create another keyframe. So that way it goes in here and then it can progressively work its way back over a little bit longer. So I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to set my keyframe to so 125. It's at its original position. And then 137, it's just about to pierce the thing. And then from there, it works its way back by 155. Now, the last thing I want to do is, let's click Curve Editor. When we're adding more than two keyframes, depending on how your keyframes are set up, uh, I just want to make sure that our curves are linear. So let's just select all of these and click the straight line. And that way it's just going to be uh, very linear in terms of the animation. But I think that will work better for us. So one other thing I just want to mention is don't freak out with like, oh, I, I don't know your exact position and timing and blah, blah, blah. Just eyeball it. It's not about getting it exactly the same as mine. 
Um, this is about just saying, okay, roughly, let's just throw it in, see how it looks, tweak it where we need to, use your best judgment. Because it's not, in this case, like, it's not about getting the exact setting, it's about working out, like, what looks good. So that's all we're doing, we're eyeballing. I'm definitely guessing. I had not even intended to, to make this, but I just thought it'd be cool to do something to help make the shape feel a little bit more organic. Okay, so this is where it begins to pierce. So we see that this stuff is still falling. So it's not like it all falls and then this just turns on. This is gradually beginning to continue to fall as well as it moves back. So I think that that's just gonna help make the whole thing feel a little bit more organic. Uh, finally, I'm just going to look in here. So I guess that's the other thing is that right now it's only doing what's considered in this section. So our outside box ends there. So it doesn't consider any of the rest of it. So that's something that we could consider is, do we make more of it dynamic? Um, that is a good question. So because we're going further back, we might need to make more of the back here dynamic to compensate for that. Because it's going outside of that area. So I'm not going to worry about that for now, but if you do want this to feel like it's going all the way back, then we just need to expand that outer box. Um, so that way more of it is dynamic. You could just go in and say, okay, well, let's get these guys and make them dynamic again. But the problem is that they've got nothing to collide with, so they would just fall through everything. So it's just worth keeping that in mind. Like, it's very easy, we could set it up, but if we make more of this active, the slower the sim's gonna be, uh, because we're now breaking half the building, um, which is fine, but for now I'm just gonna keep it where it is, so that fish shape that we have isn't gonna go all the way out, um, which is okay. So, at this point, we, we've, we've already done a lot. We got this all breaking, I think it looks pretty cool. Um, what I wanna do next is animate um, the top collapsing, and also, like I said, I want to have some of these bigger chunks. They're mainly in the floor, but I want to have the bigger chunks breaking as well. So, we'll do that really quick. In fact, just to speed this up, we're going to turn walls off. Let's just focus on the floors, because they're going to be the main culprit. Um, the structure of them is very flat and bland, so they end up just kind of getting that Voronoi shape. So we end up with something like this. And you see like, the edges break a lot more. But these sections here that are falling um, just look a little bit bland. So what we can do is let's just identify that they are in this group. So they're not, they're all in this guy here. So if we have any of these bigger chunks, it'll work for both. Um, what we can do is get this Voronoi. I'm going to do a new one. Say Voronoi. And we're gonna name this to frag big only. And then make sure it's above the physics stuff. But what we can do is in here we have filters. So filters is up the very top. And we can actually filter the size and all these other conditions. So I enable by clicking here the filter, I hit add, and by default it's position. So I can change this, and we just want to make this uh, radius. And if you ever want to know like what radius we're, we're looking for, you could easily just make a sphere and say, okay, anything bigger than around here, like 30 or whatever, let's break it again. So the radius greater than 30. So in other words, if the radius of a particle is greater than 30, then this equals true. And this is where we can tell it to do whatever we want. So maybe we tell it to cut a few more times, random shapes on surface. I don't think there's really anything else we need to do. Um, and I'll copy that and I'm gonna paste it as an 
instance. I think Siri just went off in the background. <laughs> uh, okay. So as this comes in, we're now seeing a lot more breaking. And potentially that's too much for us. And if that's the case, then that's not a big deal. We can tweak all that. Um, one thing I might do though, is I made these instances of each other. I'm gonna right click and, and say, make unique. Um, this one, I'm gonna make it generate less points. Let's just do five. But with this one, let's try 10. So I'll run a preview and let's, let's just see what we get. So I'm gonna turn walls, frames, and roof on. Let's just see it in, in its entirety and we can make a, a decision on what we wanna do next. But I think that as long as this is looking good, the next step is going to be to um, work on getting the roof to collapse. Okay, so here's a preview of everything and we can see it all in context. I think overall this is working really well. Um, I don't like the pieces that are firing out too far. There's definitely a few things that we'll need to tweak overall. Um, I also feel like there's a lot of loose bits because we caved away that one area. So that's the, the downside here is that by getting rid of all the back area, it means that there's a lot more chance for things to, to push through. So we might need to extend that outer box just to make sure we catch everything. Um, Cause that's the whole reason we had it wasn't to break it, is to have something to collide with. I really like all the dangly bits. So that was a success. Uh, we've got all that kind of working there. And this is really important because it isn't about leaving stuff behind. It's about making this feel organic. If everything is perfectly cut and broken, it just feels a little bit too, you know, boring, but also just unnatural. So by having a lot of remaining pieces is really critical. Having them dangling is even better. So I think that's working out really well. The other thing is that we can see we have a lot of organic shapes down here because of the joints. None of this stuff has joints. So it ends up just becoming, you know, all this kind of brokeny stuff. It doesn't look very good. So that's definitely one last thing I'd like to tweak is that these pieces, um, maybe they don't need to be cut as much as they are, but I definitely think that we need to set up some bindings for them. So we'll go in again and we can get the binding, copy this, paste it in here. And remember that we have this set up to, sorry, family bind uh, for parent and siblings. There is no parent really uh, being bound, but I can then copy and paste this again. Just make sure it's always below the shape, the physics shape. Um, and then we have that set up there. So that way they sh these guys should talk to each other. Uh, I'm going to run the preview one more time. I just want to see how that works out. And in terms of breaking stuff here, I'm just going to set that to three uh, for the frag big down here because I don't feel like it needs to break that much. Uh, and then same thing for this, like six. Because I, I want some big pieces, I think. Um, <laughs> I guess we'll see in a moment. But I'll run the preview one last time. And then I want to get onto the roof. So already I think this is looking a hundred times better. Uh, I think that all those shapes that kind of looked very confetti-like earlier, um, now the whole thing's organically breaking and continues to break, which I think looks really cool. So I do think that it's worth activating the back area, even though now we'll be calculating more building, but it means that we've got something for it to collide with and we can get that, you know, extra area to break a little bit more. And on top of that, we'll start to do the, the top building now. So I think this is going to be, look really cool. Uh, so turning Typhlo off for a second, I'm just going to go back to our building and let's get our outside area. And we'll get our little fish type shape. 
and that's as far back as it goes. So I'm going to select the back points. I'm going to move them all the way back to here. And I might also just select them and bring them down a little bit more as well. Okay. So we've just done that, which just gives us a little bit more room to play with. Um, the other thing is let's activate the top area. So I think we wrote this stuff down. So the, the roof collapse should be around 174. So what I'm going to do is in the top view, I'm going to create another box. Right click, object properties, display as box. And we don't need to go all the way. Let's just go to about here, I think. Maybe there. And what was it? It was like 174. So that's roughly where we are now. So I'm going to set a keyframe here, right click. And then let's go back to 155. I'm going to hit order key and just animate this off. So I think that's good timing. Maybe we go a little bit longer. It's like 182. Okay, so we'll call this, vo uh, sorry, call this activator shape roof. Go back into tie flow. And it's just a matter of going into our surface, sorry, our surface test here and adding this object. Now let's just run a preview and see how that looks. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. I gotta look into why the top part of the building isn't falling. I like that we have that one floor that drops though. It looks pretty neat. Um, some of this stuff feels a bit bouncy. That's actually a sampling thing. So I think a lot of that will solidify once we adjust the samples in a moment. Um, so I'm not too concerned about that, but I do wanna figure out what's going on with all of this because as this comes in, it should be activating all of it. Um, so I think the reason I'm assuming is, yeah, that it's outside of that box area. So that's fine, like that's not a big deal. We can tweak that now. Should have caught that earlier, my bad. So all I wanna do is I'm gonna get the surface inside, copy that, and then we're gonna to go to this guy and we're gonna paste it in here. And let's just disable this for a second so it's a bit quicker. We can get rid of the activator shape 01, we just want the roof. So what's gonna happen is none of this is actually considered to be dynamic but when it activates, it's gonna go into this group and become dynamic. So now when we run it one more time, all of that is gonna collapse down. I think that's gonna look really cool. Uh, and like I said, the bounciness, all that stuff, we can probably tweak that now. It's just, it will slow our sim down a little bit because we're gonna be sampling a lot more. So all we need to do is go into our tie flow system here and then in the modify panel, go down to physics and this is where we can just tweak some of the stuff. The main thing is um, sub-steps. I'm gonna keep that relatively low for now. The main thing is the velocity iterations are gonna bring to 12. So position iterations, we can keep the same. Sub-steps is gonna be how many times it samples per frame, but then it's also choosing whether um, to calculate position or velocity. Velocity is causing a lot of these issues. So I upped this from six to eight and I brought this up to 12 as well. Those are the only things for now we need to mess with because that's the key thing that's driving a lot of this. Um, beyond that, if we wanted, um, make sure, yeah, we had default, we turned gravity off, that's correct. Collider is fine. If we wanna optimize this, we can kill any stray particles that go out of a certain area. And that might be good just for now to help speed things up a little bit. So going back into our building, Let's create another box because we're setting up all these conditions for it. And this new one, I'm going to make it encapsulate the entire building. It's got a lot of leeway. 
I'm going to make it a bit more forgiving for the front than the back because we won't see much to the back. And you can choose how much you want to show. Uh, again, right click, display as box. And let's select this guy and we'll call this kill box. And the whole point is that we can have our system and it can test to see whether it's inside of this. So I'm going to do a surface test and then say, sorry, outside of the kill box. Now I can hide that. And we can just copy and paste this. So I'll just move it in here for now. And then I do a delete operator and then link to it and rename it to kill box. And then I'm going to paste it down the bottom as an instance, link it to kill box. Again, kill box. I don't think either of these are really ever going to leave that area, so we don't have to worry about them. Plus, if we were to put it in this guy, then it's going to delete half the building. So it's mainly just these three active areas that we want to mess with. And it's just going to, you know, it's something that we can turn off later on, but it will just speed things up a little bit because any stray particles that end up shooting out over here or anything like that, um, they don't need to be calculated. They're just slowing things down. So by adding that in, it's just something that we can use to delete everything. So I'm going to keep that there. Okay, so I'm going to run this again. And when we do, I'm going to hide these two objects, switch to the camera view. Um, might be good to save your work at this point, but one thing I will do is make sure we turn on frame numbers. Okay, it already was on for me. Um, because we want to look at what frame the roof hits the rest of it so that we can then get that to break as well. Okay, so this is looking really good so far. Um, we've got the whole thing falling apart. Um, the only thing I find a bit distracting is the front face here. It falls down and then kind of continues to smash on the ground there. So that's the one thing. The other thing I'll point out is that there are particles that are shooting up because none of this is collidable. It's all dumb particles right now. So I do think that we need to make this a collision, even though it won't move until later on. All of this is looking great, the way it's all breaking apart. And then we have these big chunks here still. And that's just because the roof is different topology to the rest of it. They're very big. So what we would need to do is just create the filter to have a, here I'll explain it with this open. Um, if we were to put it in here, we would just duplicate this and we would set up a different filter for anything bigger to have more points basically. But because we have this lock building and then we, have this whole area activating. I'm just thinking about this. Anyway, one thing we will do is I'm going to duplicate this lock building, paste it here, and I think I need to create another box. So this is where we're getting into kind of choreographing the whole thing. So you got box inside, box outside, and then we have the area above. So what I want to do is with this roof shape, I might right click clone and then just say um, roof vol top roof. Let's just call it that. So it's, it's basically inside of this category. And obviously that when we duplicate it, it turns off box mode. So we got to turn that back uh, on. Now I'm just going to select this keyframe, hit delete that one first, and then that one. So what we've done is we've just got a box that represents the area that this one moves into. Okay, so as we move forward, that box moves perfectly over the other one. So I'm going to use this to preserve that part of the roof. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. This is us fine tuning everything. So we're getting a bit more complicated now, but it's necessary. So 
what I will do is I'm going to turn off that roof. I'm going to then add in... I might need to disable this for a second just so it's a bit faster. Uh, I'm going to add in our volume top roof. So think about this for a second. We have our original structure. It then says, okay, well, anything outside of the volume inside goes in here. Anything outside of the volume outside this box here, you kind of just turn off and have it on for display. However, just this one area, I want to specifically send in here. And what we're doing is we're telling it to just lock it all together. I can turn off the bind. And we can turn these off for a second. But the whole point is that this now is a collidable object. It's going to sit statically. It's not going to move, but it's collidable. And that's important just that that way um, no pieces of geometry fly through the roof because right now they are. Okay. Now, at some point, we can then say to activate the area. And we kind of don't need the one up here, so we probably remove that. We just need the roof because the roof is going to come in, turn it on, and send it into this event. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm just going to call this locked roof. Display only. Now, I'm going to copy this big chunks. I'm going to paste it again. I'm going to say bigger only. And we can put them on top. And the radius, we could probably set to be bigger. Uh, I'm going to set this to be like 25 or let's say 35. And the filter, I'm going to set it to like 55. I don't know. Let's just try that out. Um, for now... We can probably turn off everything and just see what we get. I don't know if it's going to activate with just the roof, but we can try it out and see. So I realize I've kind of gone through that a little bit quickly. Um, I'll probably go back in a second and see what we get. Yeah, that's definitely not going to activate. So we'll turn walls on and just see what we get. But the whole point is this comes in, crashes, creates the explosion, the explosion hits and mashes everything together. And then we have this whole activation area. In fact, I'm going to turn the walls off because we are just using this activation area. So hopefully, no, we, we definitely need it. So I'll run the preview. I was trying to avoid it. Uh, I'll run the preview and we can check it out. But this should break all the big chunks more. And the reason that we put bigger only is that it'll break them. And then if there were any that were still bigger than 30, it's going to break them again, in theory. So um, the ordering is very important here. And oh, yeah, we need to make sure that's turned on. Definitely. So, yeah, in fact, that's probably why it didn't work <clears throat> a second ago. So make sure this is turned on. Uh, we don't need to worry about the volume outside. We don't need to worry about the joints unless we want to. I'm going to keep them there just in case we want to turn them on. But I kind of like the idea of them not being on. So that way it falls a bit more organically. Um, I didn't like the front face falling out. So once we run this... We can check which group that's in. And if we wanted to, we could make the binding a little bit weaker. And that would encourage it to break. Um, so I'm going to run this one more time. And we can check out how it looks. I'm going to do this outside of the camera. I just want to see the entire thing. And we can see what we think of this. Okay, so here's our simulation uh, so far. And we can see that everything explodes, everything begins to cave down and crash and do its thing. Now, there are still some big chunks at the end here. Um, I don't mind them too much. Maybe we can break them a little bit more, but I don't want to, you know, for me, I feel like this stuff is broken way too much. 
So I don't mind having some of these bigger chunks. That's totally fine. The last thing that we'll want to do is work on getting the bottom area to break. But one thing I will do, let's just jump back into tie flow for a second. And I just want to check, I mean, obviously the, this group's going to be all the, the bigger chunks. Um, I just remember before I ran the preview, I, there was something I wanted to look at, but I think overall this is all in a pretty good spot. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of stuff breaking, but I guess you can't avoid that. You know, we, we do have a building collapsing, so it needs that. I think it's mainly just, let's just check. Yeah, that's all in this group here. So if we ever wanted to do anything more with that, we can. Okay, so at this point, we just need to do the, the last piece here and then we're done. And that is that when the top building comes down, I want to have this hit. So about 208, I want the entire thing, let's say 207 to be safe. I want all of this to break. However, I think I want to create a separate group for this because I want, I don't want this to break as much as everything else because all of this um, tends to be pretty intense. Whereas this stuff here, I feel like doesn't need to be as intense. So one thing we'll do is create one more box. And I think that's pretty good. I'm going to move it in a little bit. I'm doing this off screen, but I'm just turning off the events just to see what group. I'll start with the dumb particles. So yeah, that's all in the dumb stuff. Huh. Okay, so... I think when I activate this, I'm also going to need to activate a larger area here as well, or I just do that anyway. And I think it's probably safer to do that, so that way all of this is considered dynamic. So this is going to be the activation area, whereas um, I'm just doing it off screen, but the display only is all of that. So I think I'm going to need to create another section which tells this all to be dynamic. And that way, it's just playing it safe, so that way it's all colliding with it. So, going to the, I'll do the left viewport. I'm gonna create a spline. Switch perspectives. And again, just add an extrude. Should remember my settings from before. And I'll move this a little bit wider. Okay, so we're just having this here. So that way, some of these other dumb particles can be considered um, collidable. I think that's just a smart move to do. So that way, um, anything that's falling will interact with it. So in theory, I'm gonna go back to the first frame. In theory, all I would need to do is say, with the locked building here is to pick this other object. So it's saying that it has to be outside of this area too, whereas these ones are collidable. And then with this box that we have coming in, I want this to, I've forgotten the frame that we um, decided on, so I'll bring up my preview again. I think it was 207. Okay, so a frame 207, we'll get that to to be completely on. And I want this just to turn on. I'm not gonna animate it in. So 207, 
set a keyframe, and then set a keyframe to move it out of the way. So at frame 2 or 7, it's going to jump into place. And now what I'll do is I'll say surface test inside and pick this object. And so that surface test, we're going to move down here. And I'm just going to set up another group. This is where it's getting a bit more complicated. We'll label everything soon. But this new group, um, I might get the fracture a little bit, let's say four or three, but not much. And we don't really need a kill box for this. But by doing that, it means that when this box comes in, it's going to activate the stuff. It'll break it a little bit, but it'll be collidable with everything else. Um, the other thing we could do is under the physics shape here, uh, let's set the dynamics to be one. And that means that it'll be a lot lighter than everything else. So it'll get pushed away. And the final thing I just want to check is I don't want to destroy the entire building. So when this box comes in at 207, yeah, I just want to have that. So the rest of it will be dynamic. It's just this section here will be able to break. And that's why I'm also just making sure it's kind of midway. Okay, so I'm going to run this. Fingers crossed um, everything works. And I'll go through the settings again, just explain everything. We'll label it because uh, I, I know that we're kind of building a bit of a monster here. Okay, so here we can see the finished result. Now, there are still a few big chunks. And I'm kind of trying to decide whether or not we break them too because we could easily tell these guys to break on a certain frame as well so that way they can kind of come all the way to the bottom and then fall apart and I think that would look really cool but I also think it needs to have some big chunks in there just to give it variation and some of these things uh, you know later on we're going to add detail to so I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing Overall, I think this is looking pretty cool. Um, I don't like how it explodes up the top too much. You know, there's stuff like that that we can definitely um, easily fix if we needed to. But I think that the sim looks pretty awesome overall. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is we'll wrap this video. I know it's been a long one. We've gone through a lot. And um, we'll be moving into... Uh, the next lesson where we're going to do the glass, we'll be detailing out the rocks, we'll be finalizing our entire sim, which we'll then be able to do all the explosions and everything else for. Now, as I mentioned, we covered a lot. Um, obviously, I went through this pretty quick, but the workflow is pretty straightforward. We have our building all piped out here. Then it's testing uh, that active area the volume inside and if it's in if it's oops if it's not inside then it goes in here and we're saying okay well now we have the outside area and that area is kind of more of a static collision area but then everything else is just for display all right and there's the explosion. So everything's just for display at that point. However, then we activate the roof later on and we get it to break apart. Um, so there's the roof breaking. And we also use those activator shapes to activate that as well. Uh, and then finally, down here, this I believe is the bottom area that we're getting to, um, to break apart later on as well. And then this here is just, you know, anything in the initial, uh, the ship crashing, causing it all to break, that's here. So it's pretty straightforward. It's just we're having to break it up to get different behaviors based on different results. And that's more because we're in an event-driven system. If we're using thinking particles or something like that, we have a lot more control um, to do it all in one overall system. But the result is cool. Like, um, I think we, you know, we've gotten a lot from this and we still have those residual shapes from all the bindings and everything so i think this has turned out really really cool okay so in the next lesson we'll continue 
throughout all this and we'll be digging into the glass. So as far as I'm concerned, this is the final simulation of the building. Um, but now we're going to do the glass and other th stuff like that. And part of that is like when, when we resume, you will need to cache this out. So in other words, play it all the way through. We can export caches, but we need this to be active still because we're going to be feeding off of it. So for now, uh, we'll just, you know, just be prepared that you're going to need to pre-cache this. In other words, run all 300 frames for the next lesson when we load that up. Okay, I hope you got a lot from this video. And as I mentioned, we are just getting started. We've covered a lot of how to have total control over our dynamics and build an intelligent setup for production that allows us to have complete control over our dynamics, but also allows us to easily be able to change the timing, the area of destruction, the size of it all, and so much more. In the next video, we're gonna continue learning destruction even further. I wanna double down on how to set up glass simulations and how to do some really awesome effects work. The coming videos will continue to simulate fire, learning to composite, and a large array of subject matter. This is just the beginning, and I can't wait to go further into the training. Now, the important thing for you is to stick with it. It's easy to get distracted or to fall off, but as you're aware, the training isn't available forever, so it's a matter of you making the most of this training while it's available, as well as seeing things through. So stick with it and make the commitment to yourself to level up your skills and make it to the end. Keep an eye on your inbox as these videos are gonna start to come even faster now. I'm working hard to get the next video to you as soon as possible. So make sure to look out for the next email I send tomorrow. And I can't wait to continue our journey as we get further into the training.